part 13 of the Bible series. If you haven't checked the other parts out, you can check. Part 12 was the last one. So for 13, here we go. If you tell some people to use the King James Bible, sometimes they'll say, well, the Sinaiticus is the oldest manuscripts. It comes from the oldest manuscripts or something like that. And that's been said for a while now, but is it really true? What was interesting is, I like the book, um, it's called Neither Oldest Nor Best, How the Foundational Manuscripts of Modern Bible Translations Are Fraudulent by David H. Sorensen. He might actually give you a free copy if you can't afford it. Now, back to it. So this video, the reason why I'm doing it is because it's the Bible series. The point of the series is to show that, well, if you read English, use the King James Bible. If this is your first time watching the video, please watch the other parts. You can see them on my YouTube page. Most of the videos will be in the playlist. Now the new versions, if you've been watching this series, take out words. Just ask yourself, why is there so many Bibles? Well, watch this series. Because, again, if you read English, read the King James Bible. Now this is going to be covering, again, some of the people that say, well... The oldest manuscripts are these. And again, one time you might run into somebody and they'll say the Sinaiticus is the oldest. Well, is that really the case? Now, listen carefully. A lot of these manuscripts, from my knowledge, weren't available publicly. Recently, though, they released it where you go online and see how these manuscripts looked. So now we're going to take a look at these manuscripts. Again, these manuscripts only fairly recently from my research were we able to see the Sinaiticus. And why this is important because the people that say, some of the people that say we shouldn't use the King James Bible Again, they'll say that the other ones, that these other versions, these other Bibles, like the American Standard Bible, English Standard Version, they'll say those are based on older manuscripts. Again, one more time, the people that don't use the King James Bible, some of them will say, well, these other versions of the Bibles, they use different manuscript and it's older kind of like older is best kind of thing or maybe the logic well if it's older it had to come before that well that's not always the case and in fact there's a lot of deception out there the Septuagint people will say oh you got to go to the Septuagint and I'm not an expert on that but for my research same kind of deal the Septuagint the dates have been false lified they've been falsified so that's another thing I'm just bringing up so you know that some people will say, well, the Septuagint, if you get some of these books. In this case, I'm going to show you again the manuscript. So without further delay, here it is. And it's released publicly now. And I just took a picture from the book, Neither Oldest Nor Best by David H. Sorensen. I suggest you check that book out. And he might even give you a free copy if you can't afford it. So here we go. Now I put this fake up here. Because you're going to see some of these other manuscripts from around the same time. You see F Codex Bize, probably not pronouncing that right, but 5th century. And then you have the Codex Sinaiticus, 4th century. Then here's one from the 5th century. And if we go down here... You can see 3rd century how it looks, and even the 15th century how sometimes it looks. And then they put one for the, now, the, again, Latin Vulcate. But 
um, what I want to show you here is more of these 5th and 3rd centuries, okay? And without getting into um, maybe the Latin Vulgate and stuff like that, I want to just show you basically this front row here. Um, so, actually, I probably will just crop it here because I, I really don't even know if we need the bottom. So, I think it'd be better if we crop it. So, let's I'll crop that. And there we go. It's kind of better. Now, look at that. You see the difference in color? Now, this is supposed to be from 4th century. And it's mostly white. I mean, if you had to say what's the picture, um, you know, if we zoom in a little bit, you can see it online if you search. But, you know, for just sake of video here, you can see it's mostly like a whitish gray, maybe. Uh, maybe a dark white, kind of a... Maybe even not extremely light white, but I'd say it's more light than dark. Where these other ones, you can see they're kind of a tannish brown. And remember, this is supposed to be like, um, they're saying 4th century. So, AD. Um, so, what are we saying? Would that be like, um, you know, somewhere around 1600 years old are they saying this is? And look how look how it looks. The point is why this was again. It, it was in a museum somewhere, and then we could see it, and now it's been online. But before, from what I understand, people weren't able to see it to examine it. And just a few years ago, they released it. Well, now you can see which one doesn't look. We have three manuscripts. Can you see which one doesn't look like each other? out of these three. Remember when you're kind of younger? At least we played, which one doesn't look like each other? Which one's different? Okay, you see the difference? How about if I make it easier? Difference in color. Well, the middle one, you'd have to say. And this is supposed to be the oldest one. And why is this important? Because, again, I give the example like, um, you know, the Septuagint, how they say, oh, the Septuagint is so old. It's this old, and it's. I don't think it, they're telling you the truth. But in that case,